All right, Genesis chapter 6 and Numbers chapter 13. Now notice in verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. So I'll stop right here. Notice that Genesis says giants, right? We believe that these giants are the offspring of the son of, sons of God. Numbers chapter 13. Notice right here. Go to Numbers 13, verse 33. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So, Bible-believing dispensationalists, we teach that in Numbers chapter 13 and Genesis chapter 6, these are referring to like really supernatural strange creatures, giants. They exist. This is not a myth. This is not a fantasy. This is real. Yeah. Now, there are people who are anti-dispensationalists who bash and criticize dispensationalists for teaching this. So those kind of people, I'm going to bash and criticize. Others who disagree or have a hard time believing it, I'm not bashing you. I'm going to bash the ones who are uh, bashing this one, bashing us on this. Okay, so no offense taken to the viewers. Now, Numbers 13 and Genesis 6, how they argue is that, yeah, it says giant. That doesn't mean it has to be supernatural. It's still a normal human. It's not like something supernatural or big. Because their example is this, is that they will take uh, evidences of today, which is true, find the, uh, the tallest people in the world. All right, type that out. And then you'll see all these people who are extremely tall, like giants. So their argument is this, giant is not referring to like some kind of 100-foot mythical, strange, supernatural creature, but a normal human that's really tall. Because look at verse 32 by context. See, they're going to argue by context. And all the people that we saw in it are what? Men of a great stature, and there we saw the giants. See that? So that's what they're arguing. It's simply referring, for, referring to normal humans who are tall. That's it. But how that is easily debunked is this. Well, first of all, notice they'll say that's why in verse 33 we were like grasshoppers in their sights. It's not like literally, you know, they're like a grasshopper and we're that tall. That's how they'll argue. But here's the thing. This kind of phrase about uh, grasshoppers used for height, and it's the only time in the Bible. The only time in the Bible where it's mentioned gra like the height of grasshoppers with a tall person to a shorter person is Isaiah 40. Go to Isaiah 40, verse 22. Let's see what the Bible defines this as. The height like a grasshopper. Oh, it doesn't mean like it's like real, like literally, you know, you're a size of a grasshopper and they're that tall. No, 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 no. Well, Isaiah 40, verse 22. The only time where it mentions as a height comparison grasshopper. It is he, that's God Almighty, that sitteth upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof. See, the inhabitants of the earth are as what? Grasshoppers. See that? You think when God was saying that when he was sitting on the earth, he was only 10 foot tall. Or did he literally mean that, that he's like really big and tall, that when he looks down on you, that you look like grasshoppers? That's what they meant by look like grasshoppers. See that? You just look at scripture with scripture, and Isaiah chapter 40 shows that this is not just something normal, okay? Isaiah 40, 22 shows that the grasshoppers is that kind of a height. That's why you really look like it. Grasshopper, grasshopper. It's used for height in the Bible. But if you say, oh, no, well, Scripture with Scripture, we proved it. But let's also look at context of Numbers 13. Go back to Numbers 13. Numbers 13. Let's look at context. huh? Let's look at context. It means really tall. Trust me. Not just tall. It means like really, really tall. Look at Numbers 13. Context. Context. They, this is before. This is before verse 32. This is before verse 32. So you can tell they have an agenda. They deliberately ignored it. We're going to look at verse 23. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol and cut down from thence. Okay, so they were spying out the giant's land, right? What did they cut off from their fruit? From their fruit. 
w one branch, a branch with what? One cluster of grapes. And they bear it between what? Two upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the brook Eshkol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence and they returned from searching the land after 40 days. Here's a cluster of grape to me. Yeah. What are the sizes of two people holding a cluster of grape? On a staff. Okay, now we saw by context, see that? Numbers chapter 13, verse 23 through 25. It's not just, oh, over uh, tw uh, 11 foot tall, just 11 foot, foot tall. No, this is two humans had to carry one cluster of grapes. Wow, that's crazy. crazy, right? Amen. Why do you think they said we were in their sight as grasshoppers? Amen. This is just Amen. blind ignorance. 23, 25. They must have skipped this in their Bible reading and search word giant like an amateur would do. Yep. They must have done that. Or great stature. They didn't read the whole context like they did with Genesis 6, right? Deliberately. The verses were there for first mention. It showed first mention anyway before it came to those verses. They, only a blind fool, a blind idiot would ignore that. Now I'm talking about those people who bash dispensationalism and ignore this teaching. Now look at Genesis chapter 6 verse 4. Not only that, look, if they read this about the giants in Genesis 6, they would have realized this is not some normal giant. This is something really supernatural out there. Look at Genesis 6 verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, Look at this. How are these giants produced? When the who? Sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Look at that. That's not some normal giants if you just normally read Genesis 6-4. Anybody, if they just normally read that, would have easily saw these giants became the offspring of sons of God. That would have been easily seen. So this shows right here at Genesis 6-4. So we saw... Num uh, Isaiah, Numbers, and Genesis 6-4 that easily debunk this. This is something really big right here. All right? This is something supernatural really big. That's why they hate this verse. So they will, they will, read, they will dissect this verse, every single word, so that they can, they can ruin that interpretation. Look, when you read it the first time, did you think of it that way, that these giants were offspring of sons of God? Did you see it that way when you read it? Yeah, if you just read it, you would have thought it that way, right? Unless you have a deliberate agenda, you wouldn't. A, deliberate, a person who has a deliberate agenda is going to slow down and try to dissect every single word to find a different interpretation. So this is how they do it. A normal reader would not have seen this unless they have an agenda, okay? These are people who have an agenda. Look at this carefully. Let's dissect it. That way you can see that. There were giants in the earth in those days, right? So the giants. And also after that. So meaning there were just giants in the earth in those days. And after the giants, see that? When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. So they're saying right here that the mighty men were the, these are mighty men, referring to just normal people. Because if you look up every verse in the Bible that says mighty men or mighty man, it's referring to a normal human. So when the sons of God intermingled with the daughters of men, they produced mighty men, normal humans. And that happened after there were giants in the earth. So meaning that the offspring of sons of God is just mighty men, normal humans. It's not giants, see that? Because this offspring of son of God is after that, after the giants. <laughs> see, if you dissect it like that, then you can see it. A person who has agenda would see that. You wouldn't have if you just normally read the verse, right? Those are people, that's why they hate dispensationalism, because we read the verse as it says. Anything that a normal person would see. But these people, they have to dissect every word. 
so that they can fit their nice little interpretation. If they like to dissect that deep, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do the fairness, okay? Let's dissect. One, they didn't dissect good enough. They didn't really look at that verse carefully. They didn't. It's just like an amateur of doing it. They gotta look at every single word, punctuation, and setup in the King James Bible in the verse. You ready? Let's do this. Notice it says right here, there were giants in the earth in those days, comma, or semicolon? Semicolon. The semicolon is irrefutable proof that makes all the difference. Okay, look, so then, it's an independent clause. So let's put it right here, that way it can make more sense, because we're dissecting here, people. I wouldn't be doing this unless there were people who deliberately had an agenda. If you're a normal Bible reader, you would have gotten this. But people who just complicate the verse, then I'm going to play their playground. Let's complicate the verse, okay? Here we go. Giants clause, okay? That's one clause, right? Giants clause, that's one clause. That's an independent clause. That's a separate clause. So the next clause, and also after that, is not connected. It is not referring to the same clause here. It's a separate clause, also after that. So, what is this wording going to refer to in the clause? Also after that, does it say semicolon or comma? Comma, continuing the idea. This is connected to which? It's going to connect to this clause. Also after that is referring to what? When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, comma, and they bear children to them, comma, the same became mighty men which were of old, comma, men of renown. That's all the same one idea. See that? So the comma is continuing the same idea together. Basically, that after when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they produced mighty men. See that? That's what the after was referring to. It's not referring to the giants clause. It's referring to the sons of God intermingling clause. That's what the after that was referring to. After when the sons of God intermingled. Also after that, sons of God intermingled clause. Because it's comma, comma, they're all continuing the same thought and idea. This one ended with this, okay, comma is proof, number one, to prove that it's the same idea. Number two, semicolon definitely proved that it forced the separation of the clause. Semicolon forced that separation. There you go. So they didn't really read, dissect it, every single word and punctuation like they should. And they call themselves King James only Bible believers? Weird. Weird. They call this stuff, that's weird, that's strange, that's weird. I look at them and when they read this, I go, weird, weird, weird. Oh, that's just strange. Oh, that's just weird. Now, the thing is this, concerning the mighty men, they will say that this is referring to normal humans. Now, that may be true concerning about different verses in the Bible, about mighty men referring to humans, but that doesn't work in this particular context. You might say, why? The reason why is this, is that in this context right here, why, look at this, verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. Why would the giants be mentioned in the same verse about the sons of God intermingling? I thought, I thought they were King James only Bible believers believing every verse. Why is the giants clause in the same verse as the sons of God? Why are they mentioned in the same verse right there? So in, in this text right here, in this verse, you also got to think about this. It's not just the giants mentioned in the same verse. Why would the clause about the giants end with a semicolon? Because you got to realize this. The semicolon shows an independent clause that bonds with each other. See that? So this is one independent clause that's bonding together about something that has to do with this right here. See that? So they ignored that part. I mean, these guys don't know basic English. That's the problem. I bet you that probably when they wrote a letter, they never used a semicolon before, I guess. I guess these people just so dumb in English, they never used a semicolon before, I guess. 
these people. Another thing to also add on top of that, that way you can understand, is this. So remember, you got the second clause right here. If this second clause is after this semicolon, what's it doing? Because of that first clause somehow, it has to show something right here. Because think about this. Let's assume this. Let's assume all the author wanted to say was there were giants in the earth in those days. That's all he wanted to say. Does that make sense for that verse? That's all he wanted to say? There were giants in the earth in those days. That's too short and vague. Why would he even write that part then? Unless he wrote that part to show you something here. See that? That's their problem. The author, when he wrote there were giants in the earth in those days, semicolon, why would he mention there were giants in the earth in those days? Why would he say that? He's saying that to show you something here. <laughs> so this thing, there is no doubt, there is, you have to realize that this giants clause has to do with something with the sons of God intermingling clause. There's absolutely no doubt about that. So see, they fail to look at every single word and punctuation verse by verse as the scripture stated. These people are just such amateurs and the only thing they got was also after that. That's all they got. And they thought they made themselves smart. You know what would have stopped this complicated mess? You read Genesis 6-4 as it is and everyone thought of it that way at the first time. No one would have figured this one out unless you were complicating it yourself. See that? There's no doubt. Common sense, first time, you would have seen that intermingling. That has to do with the giants. And complicating as well, you would have saw the intermingling has to do with the giants. 